Thank you for the opportunity to speak. I support Rhode Island's efforts to encourage economic development and job growth. Cal However, uh, Kathleen Good, yeah, while well, I'm Lake Road in Pasco. Um, however, I strongly oppose the, cons the construction of the Clear River Energy Center. The long-term environmental impact of this project far outweighs the short-term economic benefits outlined in, in, by Invenergy in their application. The Invenergy proposal promises to bring jobs to our area. However, most of the direct jobs will be in the early construction phase. The staff required for the plant operation is much smaller. Our economic development should focus on sustainable jobs that can grow the region's economic base. The tax benefits to Burrillville are calculated on a per household basis at less than $350 per year, even if the plant provides tax relief at the high end of their estimate. The loss in property values for residents overshadows this potential tax benefit. The projected reduction in energy costs to Rhode Island residents is short-term and minimal and can be cal calculated in several different ways. So obviously Invenergy has one way of calculating it and other um, analysts have another way. Uh, finally, the results of the February ISO energy auction demonstrate that this power plant is not essential for the future energy needs of New England. In contrast, the negative repercussions of building the largest power plant in New England in our backyard are extensive. Disruption to the towns along routes 44 and 100 will be significant during the 30-month construction phase. Hundreds of very large tractor trailers per month will impact traffic and degrade an infrastructure that's already in need of repair in some areas. The forest and wetlands destroyed by the project house wildlife and help to remove carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. Several recreational facilities that people have, have spoke, spoken of benefit from the rural character of the northwestern part of our state. Burrillville will be per forever changed by a project that continues to rely on fossil fuels in a time when it is clear that alternative energy is the key to a sustainable energy future. Once the plant is operational, threats to the environment will escalate. Heavy tankers will continue to use local roads as the diesel oil storage tanks re require refilling. The large amounts of water removed from the local aquifer each day will not percolate easily back into the groundwater because of the nisic nature of um, our, our substrata. The substrata. <laughs> substrata. Um, local, local wells may be adversely affected by the cone of depression around the Pasco Town well. The filtering of MTBE tainted water from the well will require large amounts of activated charcoal if, if, it's, if it's indeed filtered. And that will become toxic waste that will require being disposed of in some way. The noise and light pollution will be significant and the carbon emissions from the plant when it burns diesel oil up to 50, 60 days per year um, will exceed the emissions of some of the coal plants that are currently being brought offline. There will always be the possibility of an accident, a leaking oil tank, a problem involving the hydrogen tube trailer, a cat catastrophic failure of the cooling system, events that despite all contingency plans would be disastrous for the community. And once the facility is decommissioned, it will remain a large blight on the northern Rhode Island landscape. Rhode Island needs to be a leader in the creation of sustainable energy programs that can help grow our economy and give us an economic advantage in the coming years. We shouldn't be investing in fossil fuel energy plants that will continue to contribute to climate change in the world our children and our grandchildren will inherit. Thank you very much for your time. <laughs>